I'd like to talk about bank charges <clears throat> because I've had quite a rough week in fact I'm very depressed really I just discovered yesterday that my wages from last week uh, have been stolen out of my bank account it's, it's probably not that much money to a lot of people but it's a whole week's work and I think the thing that really stings is that the the memories of the blood, sweat and tears from last week are still relatively fresh. I have a debit card and I use it in the supermarket, the petrol station. I use it all over the place. The chip and pin. Beep, beep, beep. It's great. Well, I thought it was great. Uh, what I didn't realise was that I thought that if I didn't have any money in my bank account then the card would just not work. That's what has always happened in the past. Um, and the checkout assistant would say, I'm sorry madam, but your card has been declined. Um, but that wasn't happening the whole of last week. I was going and buying all manner of things. Um, all sorts of frivolous stuff like food from the supermarket, petrol to put in the car, to get to work, to get the kids to school. Um, all, all sorts of silly, silly things like that. Um, and I also bought my children some sweets from a newsagent uh, and a pint or two of milk and a couple of other things which came to about four pounds. And then I discovered this week that apparently there had been no money in my account um, that was available for the whole of the week. But instead of stopping my card or, or making sure that my payments were rejected, the bank allowed the payments to go through and have also charged me £35 for each and every transaction that I made during that week with my card. Now obviously those charges are quite steep because I use my card a lot. And the bag of sweets that I bought my children and the other little bits and pieces that came to £4.14 pence, in all reality cost me £39.14 as an example of the week's events. Not only has that money gone, but also when I went into the bank today to talk to them about this, um, I said, good grief, I didn't find anything out about this until yesterday and over the weekend, because my statement only sort of tells me up to Thursday what's been going on, over the weekend I've been I've been using that card all over the place because I was oblivious, so I've had absolutely no idea this was happening. I've even made purchases as small as £2.50 for some household products. And I asked the manager, surely I'm not going to be charged £35 on top of that. He assured me that I would be. And I, I daren't look at my own bank account, so I asked him to look and find out how badly the situation had got to. But he reassured me by telling me that a lot of it from today, just today's charges, had been cleared by my child benefit, which was paid in today. It is as if my debit card has, in the space of a week it seems, turned into a poisonous and toxic little credit card by stealth without any warning or notice. Now I expect there has been some warning or notice probably in the junk mail that uh, we get through the post and we get a lot of junk mail from our banks all in teeny weeny weeny print and I admit I never bother to read it because I don't have time I'm usually very tired because as soon as I finish work I collect my children from school and they're hungry and they like to have an argument in the car on the way home, you know how it is. And it's usually raining and the council are usually digging the roads up so we're normally sitting in traffic and I'm quite tired and thinking what can I cook for dinner tonight for five pounds? Completely unaware that in actual fact my purchase of dinner for five pounds is costing forty pounds. The banks so I see on the news this morning, after getting my shock yesterday, are apparently going to be insured even further by us as taxpayers with billions and billions and billions of pounds. It astounds me. 
for years, in fact, all my life. All I've ever heard governments say is there's not enough money for this, there's not enough money for that. We, we can't afford more hospitals, we can't do this. But as soon as the banks sneeze and, and say we need some money, suddenly there are billions and billions and billions of pounds available. And yet they're still shafting customers and I see that repossessions are soaring and it seems to me they've never had it so good. They're as good as on the dole. People moan that unfortunate people who've lost their jobs, who need social security in order to eat, um, are a drain on society. The newspapers are, are always full of it, aren't they? You know, dolites, they have all nicknames for them. Or perhaps it's people who move to this country from other countries, apparently they're a drain on the country. Or people who are ill, who go to hospital, that apparently they're a drain on the, the country as well. Uh, nobody ever mentions that the banks are a bit of a drain on the country because the way I see it, they are. They're on the dole. They are on corporate welfare. And, and that money comes from us. And I'm not quite sure how it's all going to be paid for, but probably be people like me. I don't know. And yet they're still taking money in bank charges. And we're told that the reason that they're given all these billions and billions of pounds it's because we are the banks. That's that's the reason that they've said. Um, right now, I have to be honest, I don't feel like the bank. Now, I'm just a person, just a bod. Doesn't really matter what I think. But it got me thinking, Nobody ever says these things. Nobody ever says, why do we have to give the banks billions and billions of pounds? It was their fault. They got themselves into this mess. And they're not even being very nice to their customers. They're not very nice to their shareholders. I saw what happened to the shareholders at Northern Rock. They got nothing. The shareholders at Bradford and Bingley, I believe, have got nothing. And probably the shareholders of all the other banks will end up getting nothing. <sighs> As a taxpayer, I don't think we're getting a very good deal. And... The Prime Minister keeps saying we're going to persuade the banks to uh, lend money. Well, firstly, I don't think that relighting the lending industry is actually very helpful because I think that's what's caused a lot of the problems in the first place. We need a bit of deflation and things to get a bit cheaper, not to be set light to again. Um, and secondly, why is he only trying to persuade the banks? Why doesn't he downright demand it? He's giving them billions and billions of pounds in dole checks. Why doesn't he say, if you don't do this, you don't get the dole check? I mean, if someone signs on unemployed, they have to go and sign for uh, every two weeks. They have to actively prove they're seeking employment. There are certain things they have to do or they don't get the dole check. It seems to me that the, he's just asking the banks a bit nicely, could you could you please awfully lend some more money? Why doesn't he say stop your flipping bank charges and stop repossessing people's homes? Why don't you make a deal with these people? You, what good is a repossessed home to you? It's worthless, it's, it's going down in price all the time. It's in negative equity. The people who are in it, they're very keen to keep it. They have a motive to keep it. Can't you sit down and talk to them and arrange a cheaper housing plan? But no, they'd rather repossess. And, and then this big toxic bubble gets created. Why isn't he saying that? Why isn't he saying to the banks, stop what you're doing or you're not going to get any more money? It just seems like there's a bottomless pit. But I'm just um, a nobody, and I'm probably wrong. And the bank's probably totally justified in taking my last week's wages. But I thought I would make this video blog because I would really, really like to know if anybody out there, if anybody feels the same. I'd love to know, what do you think of the banks?